Hi, I'm Alex Corder for Serious Writer's Block, author of fantasy novel Return of the Dragon Knights. Here at Serious Writer's Block, we help serious writers share their stories and message and leave a lasting legacy. I'm going to tell you a story today. It's kind of my way of introducing myself to you. And it's going to be more about a struggle that I've had in the past. And I'm going to tell it to you because I'm thinking that maybe some of you are having the same kind of struggles. And you can learn from my experiences that there are, there is a way that we can accomplish what we dream. And no matter what anyone tells you, you can do that if you say you're going to do that. I remember when I was about to publish my book, I was talking to some friends about the idea that I had, and one of them told me that the idea wasn't original enough, and because of that, it wasn't going to sell. Could you imagine at the, at the time how devastating that was to have someone that I trusted tell me what I was going to do was, was going to not do anything for me? So I want you to keep in mind that, as I tell this story, we have to first overcome the thought of, we can't do it. So I've been writing for as long as I can remember. I was one of those dreamers that looked at their favorite books and said, well, this can't be too hard. <laughs> right. No. It's extremely hard if you don't know what you're doing, especially if you don't know what to do first. That was also me. I had no idea what I was doing, but I decided I was going to do it anyway. And that has since turned into a love for creating and crafting stories and improving my skills so that I can better tell that story to my readers. But it wasn't always like that. I didn't just walk through my high school years like some perfect student who then decided, you know what, I think I'm going to write a novel maybe 100 pa 80, 80, 180 pages or something like that while I'm at it. No, and this story I'm going to share with you, I want you to first also know that I'm not saying this stuff to brag or to make you feel bad or whatever. That's the last thing, that's the last thing I'm want, I want. I'm going to tell you this because it's important to me that if you are, you are in similar struggles or if you're unsure, you know that there is a way that you can grow as a writer and that you can accomplish, accomplish what you dream. I'm a witness that there is a way to do that. So bear that in mind as we go. Like I said before, it's so important to me that you also grow as a writer. That's the whole reason that we formed Serious Writer's Block. And because it's important, I'm going to share a part of my experiences that I haven't really ever talked to, about with anybody, not even my family. And now they're on the other side of this video watching and thinking, wait, what? And uh, yeah, hi mom. So I've been homeschooled all my life. I don't have all the, I guess you could say, street knowledge that other teams my age have, like snow days. I have no idea what that is. Um, I'll start off by saying that homeschooling is awesome. Other homeschoolers are awesome. I, on the other hand, was probably one of the lamest students that my teacher ever had. I was always late with my work. I would forget things and have to redo them. And it just it's not that my grades were necessarily bad, but it took me an extra year to get it all done. And I'm really thankful for my teacher. Hi, Mom, again. And after it all, I had a pretty bad philosophy toward education, though. For, for high school, I did a lot of my work on my own because the curriculum that we worked from had pre-made lessons and tests so I could go through it myself. And it worked out because my mother had to teach the other kids. And it was fine. I was old enough to handle it. But I was having a rough time. I lost all motivation because after failing test after failing test and then working for ridiculous hours to get past that and learn it anyway, it seemed futile. It, I didn't see a way and I didn't see a future. I thought if I'm going to sit here and do all this just to fail getting into a decent college, then why am I even here? Wrong turn number one. Because of that, I didn't bother going to get help when I was having trouble. What was the point? I'd get just get stuck after trying to figure out this thing for an hour. Wrong turn number two. Then I started losing confidence in other subjects that I was half decent at. Of all things I could have thought I was doing bad with, I was doing bad in English. 
Wait! This guy is an author! How does that even make any sense? It doesn't. It's very silly. I know, but that's what I thought. How wrong I was to think that, though. But at the time, that's how I felt. And it wasn't a problem with speaking or with writing good English, uh, or at least I would hope so, because I wrote two novels. It was all those little rules that you find out exist while in high school. You know, grammar? I'm sure you may remember some of them. Did this happen to you too? It probably did. Well, unless you burned it from your memory because learning them at the time was torture like it was for me. It was all just piling up into a bundle of stuff that I didn't understand. And to make it worse, they had weird names. And I won't even talk about math. Again, me and remembering a bunch of little rules that tie together and have names that are weird, mostly numbers. What the heck is postulate 52 again? Uh, I don't know, I was still trying to remember the first 51, whether or not they tie into this equation or not. Although, through that all, I did take the time to write those novels during my high school years, so that counts for something. At this point, nearing 17 years old, I was a wreck. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was having a hard time in school, and come on, it was at my freaking house. How bad could it have been? The thing was, I was making it bad in my head, and that made it bad in reality as we'll talk about later. And I didn't even believe that I had a future, and time passed. It was summer of 2012. I got tied up into going to a lifeguard training camp with the Boy Scouts of America. I got a phone call one day and they said, hey, have you ever uh, tried being a lifeguard before? And I said, uh, no. Do people in high school usually try to be lifeguards? I, I had no idea. And they said, well, I'm calling to ask if you would like to re train and register to be a lifeguard for our camp. And I said, sure, why not? Um, I only half thought about it because that's some of the mistakes that I make is I'll say, yes, I'll help someone, but I don't really know what I'm doing. And they said, great, you're a lifesaver. And uh, aha, lifeguard joke. I see what you did there. Okay, bye. So this kid with no self-esteem, just signed up to be a lifeguard. How the heck did that happen? I ran through it again. There were a few reasons I came up with why it would be good. First, I could help these friends of mine that needed a lifeguard. Second, my sister would be at the camp so I could support her. It was her first time going to a week-long camp like that. And third, maybe I could make it a job. So in the end, I actually convinced myself that it would be good for me and that I should try. A couple of weeks before I'm about to go to the tra training, though, the need for me to be a lifeguard gets revoked because of a huge misunderstanding where I shouldn't have been allowed to be the lifeguard at all. Has anything like that ever happened to you? <laughs> so here I am, this kid who doesn't see any value in his abilities, about to go to a lifeguard training camp for no reason. You can guess where this is going, can't you? Somehow, I convinced myself I could do it anyway that there would be value in these skills. I still had one of my reasons left, and so I went down the rabbit hole of, oh, this will be a job so I can pay for college and find my way in the world. And with encouragement from the others there, and they were all awesome people, I actually got somewhere, and I learned some cool things, but I still couldn't do it. In the end, I couldn't pass the final tests, and so I didn't get certified. I put my all into it and still couldn't do it, and that's what I thought when I left that camp. One of these tests, if you are familiar with Red Cross certification for lifeguards, is that you have to dive down nine or ten feet, I don't really remember, to pick up a weight that's at the bottom of the pool. Only we didn't have a pool. We had a lake of wonderful brown water, and so we had to work with a makeshift pool that was sectioned off with rope. So when you find the weight, you have to pick it up, swim it back to the surface, hold it against your chest, and then swim all the way to the other side of the pool backwards and oh you have to do the whole thing in two minutes so I start off swim all the way to where the weight is and dive into the depths of this wonderful brown water and as it turns out it's really hard to see in brown water so much so that you don't even know where you're going or how far you have to go until you crash into the bottom of the lake and even then you can't see more of a few inches ahead of you so the weight was nowhere to be found that is, until I smacked right into it. At this point, do you think someone who didn't have confidence in doing this or believe that they could accomplish it could take that weight, pull it up from the depths, 
and drag it across the water on their chest in the remaining 30 seconds? I couldn't. I felt like I was drowning. The first question I asked myself when I got out of there was, if I don't even think I can do it, why am I in here drowning? Sound familiar at all? What are you currently drowning in? What is stopping you? Wrong turn number three for me took place when I got home. I stopped doing all the frantic things I was doing. I wasn't participating actively in my church anymore. I was there, but I, my mind was elsewhere. I was like a zombie. Maybe a part of me did drown in that water because I wasn't who I was supposed to be anymore. I stopped writing and thinking of stories and man, I gave up the one thing that I thought I was good at at the time. What was I thinking? I gave up everything basically. And after all is given up and you have no reason to push on or motivation, you kind of enter a stage of depression. I was heading toward it since wrong turn number one. I wasn't harming myself physically, but I entered a slow kind of death, one that is in my eyes miserable, wasting all my time and energy on useless distractions so I didn't have to think about anything else. Video games were my go-to poison. And I chose rather than try to accomplish anything, I would instead waste whole days at, like nothing was wrong, doing stupid things I'm sure later in life I'll feel remorse for all the missing moments. No one knew this, though, because I threw on my best happy face and shrugged off, like noth shrugged it off like nothing was wrong. Mainly because I was too embarrassed by how lame I thought my situation was at the time. What are people going to think when I tell them I'm not doing anything about my future and just wasting my life on unneeded things? And because of this, I didn't try to go get help for that either. Dear authors, sometimes you will feel dejected or deflated that what you are doing is not good enough, that you aren't smart enough, that no matter what you do, for example, from lifeguard camp, you'll never pull that weight off of the bottom of the pool and drag it across the water, that you are getting so many rejection slips, how could anyone want to publish your book? That if this book isn't good enough, you'll never make it, that your readers are going to find all sorts of fault with you from reading it. I know a friend who has planned out his book for 10 years and hasn't written a single word for the actual manuscript. How could I possibly devote that much of my life if it won't be worth it to me in the end? At one point or another, I felt all of these fears. And I'm here to tell you that you need to find a way that you can tell yourself to take those fears and put them aside. Put them in that shoebox in your closet that you never look at. At one point or another, though, you'll feel like this. And the, the trick is going to be that you need to remember why you're doing what you're doing. So my father worked and worked and worked and worked and worked while I was splashing around in those great brown waters. And he got my novel published on Amazon.com as an ebook. But I didn't think much of it because I had already convinced myself it wasn't good enough and that no one was going to read it. Right turn number one was when I shared that feeling with my parents. You could imagine their first reaction and when it's some little something like, what? Well, wh why did you even publish it then? I can remember my father saying that it must be good enough be because people were telling him how impressed they were that I wrote a book at my age and on top of that, they enjoyed it. And they were surprised with my vocabulary and storytelling and grasp on metaphases and <gasps> I'm actually good at English? What the heck are metaphysics? And my mother said that what she got out of the book was that my characters were likable and because of that, people would love to read it because they love the characters. And at this point, my mind was shot and the words were in effect going in one ear and coming out of the other because I was still trying to fathom what I was hearing. And then my lungs burned when I realized I'd stopped breathing and all that air that I lost drowning in those brown waters came back to me all at once. <gasps> What the heck did I give up for? And it was one of those moments where you run through it all in your head and kind of mumble to yourself, but wait, if that's fine, then what else is fine? What's going on here? So I pondered what was stopping me from being confident and achieving my goals. I related some of the problems I was having in school with them later on. And I was weirdly excited because I found this whole new world of, whoa, my parents can actually help me. And so it sounded, it probably sounded really weird 
And it was most likely like, Mom, Mom, I think I'm failing in school. What can I do to achieve my goals and excel in my dreams? And yeah, I'm pretty sure that my words blended together like that. And this wasn't really a new conversation because my parents were aware that I was having some trouble, but I never, it wasn't like I ever told them how much trouble I was having. So they didn't know exactly how I felt. And this conversation was more important because come to find out, my mother says something like this. Oh no, we're scrapping that curriculum. I took a look at some of the stuff they were having you do and it just doesn't teach it right. Wait, 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 wait! So it was all in my head. I said mostly to myself. Well, crap! All that feeling down because I wasn't good enough was only in my head. In fact, it wasn't just that. It also blinded me to the things I could actually do. And at this point, my conscience, which for some reason was locked in that little shoebox that I never look at in my closet, came out and come came down and started smacking me around. Said, what are you doing? I, I don't know. What, what do you want? It's, it, how can you forget that you wrote two books? And do you know how many people even struggle with writing one? I'm like, I don't know, man. What's wrong with you? It's like, how can you say that you're not good at anything? I don't know. What, why are you yelling at me? It's kind of scary, right? And it, it was true. How could I have forgotten that I had written, written those two novels? And I'll tell you how. I came down with a bad case of Alex is an idiot. Which just means I was saying I couldn't do anything when it was horrifyingly obvious that I could. And there was value in my ability to complete a book, right? The only thing I considered myself good at. I had some serious kicking myself in the butt to do, but it would have to wait. I first needed to catch up, so I went back to my life that was hiding on the other side of my depressed stupor. I wasn't taking no for an answer either. This time, I was going to do what I need to do and forget about all the stupid worries I had, like if it would actually make a difference for my future or not. Because of that, I completed high school. And then I planned and planned, and in November, I not only wrote another novel-length manuscript, but I also completed the requirements for my Eagle Scout rank in the Boy Scouts of America. Which, if you are familiar with them, you may know that only, on average, only one out of a hundred Scouts ever make it to the rank of Eagle before the time limit, which is when they turn 18. Do you see what happened? Only two things changed. The first is I had belief that I could actually do those things. And the second was I told all those fears about an anxiety of college, job, make a living, to stow it so I could actually get some valuable work done without being distracted by those worries. I focused on the future and my goal instead of focusing on the worries that were holding me back. If all of this was of any worth, I know I learned at the least two very important lessons from this experience. Number one, that your success is a mindset first. You have to think something can happen before you can make it happen. So if you are thinking that you aren't good enough to write a book, then will you write one? Probably not. And look, when we all start writing, it is hard. And yes, it could be better, as I constantly tell myself when I flip through my previous works. But you must believe that you can write a book before you can actually do it. Those who say, I can't or I lose, can't succeed. To be successful, we have to rather ask, what do I need to do to win? Number two, I did a complete 180 turn and found myself in love with education and studying. And you may be thinking, hold on a second, this is the guy who was just telling me a second ago that he uh, hated school and had no, no interest in education anymore. So I do admit that I didn't enjoy it, but I was wrong to think that all learning had to be painful and involve ridiculous amounts of time trying to understand something when it just doesn't work. No, I don't love the whole shove a textbook down your throat and hope it stays there method that I was going with, and I just don't learn that way. I need to experience it as well as read it. So to me, videos are awesome. So something about hearing it or seeing it done makes it more understandable for me. Point taken. I was wrong about education. Authors, as you are studying and making your craft better, do what works for you. That's one of the reasons that here at Serious Writer's Block, we try to provide you with the video as well as the article so that you can take whichever one works for you better. So that, because people do learn in different ways. And also, make it fun. 
why should you have to sit there wondering when you could just start or start on your, your writing or your planning or whatever your next step is? So you should go with the teachers and the programs and the articles that are fun. One of the problems that stops a lot of people from learning is that we think it has to be so formal. I've been there, as you've heard, and you have to remember, it doesn't have to be formal. Perhaps teaching yourself or self-education might be what works for you. It, it should be fun. And you should choose what you like. And you could even say, you know what, after hearing this Alex Quarter guy, I don't like him. He tells way too many self-deprecating jokes and his voice gets way too high when he gets excited. And you might choose some other teacher and I would be fine with that. Because I value your time and your education. If it doesn't work, do something else, right? I want you to feel that you are actually getting valuable information and are able to grow your skills. The trick to it is, is that you have to make sure that whoever you choose to learn from is actually serving you. Have you ever bought a program or a product that didn't work or was broken or wasn't what they said it was? That sucks! It's one of the suckiest feelings ever! And the worst part is, it happens to every one of us eventually. You paid good hard-earned money for that, and it doesn't even do what it says it does. I remember we got this stuff to fix a little crack in the roof once. The commercial for it lauded its durability and easy use, and most of all, it, its ability to be weatherproof. Two days later, though, I walk into the backyard to find that the stuff had disintegrated and fallen off the roof and proceeded to blow away all over our lawn. Durability in my backside! It doesn't even work! This is why I'm here. I want to serve you. I've been through all sorts of hurdles and speed bumps with finishing my novels, and I'm here to tell you that yes, there is a way. And yes, there is even more than one way. Because there are innumerable different methods and tools and tricks that you can use to help you get there. You don't have to take 10 years to finish your book if you want it done now. Hi, Dad. You don't have to surrender when the war gets tough and among the ranks of the adversary are worry, stress, and doubt. You can write a book, no matter what age you are or the education that you've had. I don't have any creative writing degrees or certifications. The only person who had to say that I was qualified to begin was me. The only person who has to say that you're qualified is you. Don't get me wrong, I'm not discounting uh, the degree or education in any field. In fact, I encourage you to go that route if it's right for you. Continuing your education is one of the greatest things that you can do. What I'm saying is, you don't have to wait for permission to start. You don't have to wait for education or for someone else to give you the green light. Start writing now to build your skills for the future. One more thing about choosing what you study is you will probably come across contradictions or difference in opinion. And when you're writing a novel, especially a fictional one, like my favorite fa fantasy genre, there really isn't any defined way to do things except for grammar. Grammar should be as correct as you can make it. And don't fret too much about it. Grammar is a skill that will, too, take time to learn and grow and develop, and it's one that I'm still horrible at. I rely on my editor, who is my father, to fix all that up for me, but I uh, remember I'm not good with those little rules and technical stuff. But recently I've been trying to learn and fix my own grammar mistakes because it's part of, my, part of improving my skills as an author, even though I hate it. In conclusion, remember that you're going to feel down sometimes. Don't let it stop you. Your success is a mindset first, and you have to believe that you can do it before the path to success is opened. Choose your teachers in studying wisely to make sure that you are getting the most out of your learning and growing your skills. If there are contradictions, decide what is right for you. When life knocks you down and gets in the way, don't you ever give up. As soon as you do, you lose control over your, over your future, like I did. And like my parents were for me during those two conversations that I had with them, you will want some support during hard times. They can be a best friend, a parent, a loved one, anybody you want, but you will want someone who you can rely on to walk through it with you and figure out some of the hard things that you have to get past. And this is especially true because you're going to want people to read the book and tell you uh, what they think and what they think isn't working. And it's hard to accept criticism sometimes, but 
you want to accept it in a constructive way that will actually improve the manuscript and also your skills. I hope this helps you. Leave a post in the comments below because I'd love to hear your questions or feelings about these topics. I'm hoping to hear from you so that I can better help you with specific problems you may be facing while writing or planning your stories. I will do everything I can to answer your questions because I want this to be about you. You, do, you deserve to have this opportunity to share your stories. So if you're serious, let your writing adventure begin. Take care.